Hello everyone, welcome back to the FPL show. Hopefully you're doing well and hopefully you're liking the little bit of a setup change if you are here on my channel over on YouTube. As you can see, I've got Damo with me once again tonight. Damo, how you going? Yeah, not too bad, Paul, not too bad. It's been a very big madness week of FPL and I can't wait to get into this one, mate. There's a lot of talking points. Yeah, it has been an absolute shambles of a week, but what do you do? It's just... Part of the roller coaster that is FPL. If you are listening over on Spotify, make sure you come over to Paulie29 on YouTube. This is where I'm going to probably throw the next few videos up just to see how they go before we go back to the Dopata channel. If you do see me kind of looking in the bottom left corner, that's because I will be looking at Damo and my camera's up here and he's down here. So bear with me. It's obviously the first time we've sort of done one of these videos in a while as well, but. Look, I think, Damo, if you want to throw up your team on the screen first, as tradition, we throw the lowest performing team, which, Damo, this hasn't been you too much this year. So take us away. Game week 11. What a game week. <laughs> Let us know where we're from. Uh, I, 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 you can't influence real life football. It's probably where it went wrong. Um, I don't think there's much I would change going into this game week. I felt fairly confident I had a good team on paper. So. It's uh, one of those game weeks where nothing went right. I think if I had my time again, I would have probably captained Solo over Harlan. But yet again, it would have equaled out to maybe two extra points, which to be fair, I only went down 5,000 rank. I'm still inside the top 20K. Yeah. Um, that might have been a difference between me actually holding rank. So yeah, look, I, I don't think there's really too much to say where it went wrong. Um, Ari Ariola is just, you know, West Ham don't look great at the back. I've gone from Pickford to Ariola, and you know they're, they're basically the same person in disguise at the moment. So yeah, that's I fun. Agree with that. um, Simicast bench. To be fair, kind of expected it would happen after we had to play a full ninety minutes. Uh, obviously midweek in the League Cup. Cash, obviously, it is what it is. You know, last week you get him substituted before they concede. This week, unfortunately, gets injured. Gwei was a good pick, and as much as AI told me to take him out for Harry Maguire or you know. Anderson or whatever, Gway did perfect. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, obviously Diaby yet again. Obviously Villa looked poor in general. Yeah. So you know, that a lot I, of shots I, though. And the way I look at it is, I could have had Watkins instead of Darwin, and I would have still got been the same way I would have been anyway. So you know, Darwin's Darwin. I don't need to speak about it. Being a Liverpool fan, I think uh, we've Maybe seen enough of the chances the we we missed. Yeah. Um. Salah, Salah is what is. You know, how often are we going to blank against Luton with like 3.05 XG? Yeah. And 25 shots at goal, whatever it was. And then obviously the Chelsea game this morning. Um, you know, uh, Spurs played well. Son had a goal disallowed for offside. That was arguably very, very, very tight. Um, until the red cards, you probably thought Spurs were the better side and really showed they were good. I'm Madison getting rolls. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously, red card. Madison rolls his ankle. I think Ange takes him off for more precaution than anything because it was like we need to change shape anyhow. Um, and then Harland obviously gets injured as well. So, That's you know, game week, too. game week where three of my players come off injured, um, one of them doesn't start, and I only have two returns across the whole team to only go down 5,000K. As the good old Andrew says, it's a good week to have a bad week because everyone else had a bad week. Yeah, perfect. So... If you want to quickly show your bench, the bench. There, yeah, Gordon and Arch, and we'll probably talk about the bench because that was probably what was the difference between us this week as you load my team up on the screen. So, again, we do have a similar team. I think I knocked you off by about five or six points this week. Anyway, so I've managed 35 points with my side. So, Ariola, Cash, Simicus, Trippier are all the same for me. I don't have Gway here. I'm playing the extra midfielder instead, which this week paid off for me. Uh, which, you know, between Bowen and Gordon are the two midfielders that you didn't have in your team, which were the two that returned for me. So Gordon looks absolutely locked in, left wing, plenty of chances, had another couple sort of half chances in that Arsenal game as well, and he's looking extremely lively. And he's about 5.7 million, I think, off the top of my head. What a value pick he uh, is at the moment. And him and Palmer are both really showing that they're capable. Bowen... Again, West Ham, you know, they did so well in the cup. I see their team come out Saturday night and bloody Antonio starting and then he gets an assist for the bicycle kick for Kudus as well. And I'm like, God damn it. But Bo Bowen looked like he was actually playing a little bit more central and advanced. And 
kind of looked more of a four four two shape from West Ham anyway. So did at times. Yeah, so I don't mind if he's going to play as a second striker like Diaby does at Villa because he's going to get his chances. And again, he right place, right time. And Bowen's got this run of fixtures. If you want to bring it up, Damo, where it's only going to get better now because you know we looked at Brentford and. Thought, yep, all right, but Forrest at home. We know Forrest are a bit up and down. Burnley, Crystal Palace, but he gets them at home as well. Spurs away, Fulham away, Wolves home. Man United at home is a good fixture for West Ham too. So I think Bowen's going to be someone who, although I don't have Madison in my team, I think I'm all right with riding Jared Bowen. Then Diaby uh, for us, you know, same as you, had the two-pointer. And then the darwin Harland combo had the captain on Harland at the only positive to Liverpool um, wasting so many chances was that, you know, the, the Salah captainers didn't get too far ahead of us this week where we had it on Haaland. Saw plenty of people, triple captain Erling Haaland. And then if you look at the bench, you know, Archer, nine. And the Udoji minus four, I wanted to ask you a little bit about that because he got sent off at 1-1. One, one. Yeah. He opened his points up. And this is the same for Romero. They both have conceded four goals. If you look at the goals conceded column to the right there, to the, like the middle of the screen, yeah, yeah it's got goals conceded. They've given you Doji minus four, although he wasn't on the pitch. So I think he's actually been like knocked two points because they conceded three more goals after he came off. So bit of a question there. I know FPL locks it out after an hour, <laughs> but I think that's a bit stiff. Like that him and Romero have got major negative points for not like for goals that were conceded when they weren't on the pitch. So just a little one that I got away with murder there because um I didn't have Udoji starting because I wasn't sure if he was going to be hundred percent fit anyway. But what I've just noticed there is it also says he's suspended until the twenty sixth of November. So if you just hit the fixtures for me there, Damo, whilst you've got his profile up, that's, that's only one telling fixture. me he's missing. Oh, there's an international break. Yeah. All right, that's fine then. So he's someone I'm going to talk about a little bit later because. He's not doing the job for me anyway. So that's my side there. You know, that puts me up to 115K from 155K. So about a 40,000-ish K increase. So we just keep chipping away at the moment, which is fantastic. But this is a major game week, I think. Um, Obviously, you know, you've held ground. I've gained a little bit of ground. So we're in a good spot between the two of us. What are your thoughts coming out of this game week? Uh, I think this is definitely a game week where he, this tip, so we have had such a clean game weeks in terms of injuries and in terms of no suspensions and no nothing. We've got our first big game week this year where we have got a lot of team news that's going to dictate what we do. Where it might have been viable to make earlier transfers and even me and you have got aggressive at times to get a couple of price rises. Yeah. Um, you know, living obviously in Australia, sometimes we have to. Um, to, you know, we, we, we get beauty of living in Australia is even though we don't get the latest team news right before the deadline, or we might be busy when the deadline comes around, we get the price we rises. Get, we get the price rise at about 11 a.m. So we can sometimes jump on a price rise right or we can sleep. Happens. We can sleep on a decision yeah. and then have a bit of extra information in the morning and be able to make that decision where for the guys over in the UK, it's happening overnight. Correct. And the reason I want to bring that up is this is not the week where if you are thinking about making a move early or anything like that. This is definitely not the week. This is a week where you're waiting on the news from Cash. Is Haaland out for a month? Is he out for just a game week? Is he actually going to be playing off the bench in the Champions League, which is a good indication? Yeah. We've got midweek football. I think the first thing I want to say is, no matter what we say in this podcast, the big thing is wait as long as possible because there is going to be a lot of team news that will dictate your team. Now, with that all being said, Paul... If I go to my tab here and I actually go to pick team, this is my team as it stands right now for next week. This is my hit the in the bus team. And the reason why it's called in the bus, if I was to get hit by a bus tomorrow, I was in hospital incapacitated, this is the team that will roll out on the yeah. match day. Um, Ariola, I don't think there's any issues. Bournemouth, Trippier, perfect. Fulham in cash. If he's up past fit, there's potential to keep him for one more week. However, I've got a little asterisk saying he's the one I'm thinking I'm looking at moving on anyhow. So this is with two free transfers as well for both of us this week. Yeah, two free transfers, and I've got 0.5 in the bank. Right, yep. Madison, I'm not sure. We discussed this last podcast. Harlan's obviously got the knock. you got my Simi Cass on the bench, which is a playing player. Archer's a playing player, and Taylor's a playing player. So 
Worst comes to worst, if I made no change and burn a transfer and something did go wrong, I've got playing players on the bench. Yeah. My f- initial thoughts are even if Cash is past fit, I still think he goes this week. Main reason is I know he gets Bournemouth in a couple of weeks and that's a good fixture, right? But he's about to go Man City, Arsenal, Brentford, who I think all of them score. He then gets Man United, which I think will score. Then it's okay and then it goes not bad again. Yeah. I think the aggressive play for me is to actually go someone like, I'll get him up here on screen, is actually just get a little bit of extra value in the team and go to a block of a Gabriel who's just been rested last game week save the extra point for Emil, get him for Burnley, which should be an out on clean sheet for Arsenal. The issue is if he starts, and the European fixture is going to dictate that as well. And yet again, I that's brought him in last went. week for Sheffield United, and it burnt me because he got rested. I think it was only lots of fixtures rested. I honestly think he's nailed long term. I just think so it was I. one of those one where oh, oh, Ted is like, oh, this is a game where I can probably give Q- QE or a start. And QE has had back to back games as well because Saliba I- then got the break in the cup. Correct, and I think it would be Saliba and they're going Gabriel. to an international break. So I think he's nailed for Burnley. Brentford, they're going to be okay. Wolves and Luton historically don't score a lot of goals. And I think I get four better game weeks out of game Gabriel than I do with the two game weeks for cash. And I get to save a little bit of money, which could free up some other moves moving forward down the track. Yeah. Now, I do have a second game week, you know, transfer. And as much as I've been banging on about Cole Palmer, I go Palmer. Yeah. I want to get him before he's prioritised, but this is not the week to do it. Yeah, I do I expect Brighton. Brighton's Brighton. the one. Yeah. And then it's just a case of, you know, obviously I would like the life of a sucker, right? Because they've got a good picture yet again, etc. But I want to bring up something. Sucker's last two games, 0.02 XG. Yeah. Awful. Arsenal, their XG is only slightly better than um, Man United's. I really think if this is a main week with Gap Madison's pass fit by Ange, which I think he will be, I said it last podcast, I just don't see whether I'm selling him to get to, Madison, to Saka because I think Madison's going to get to about 200 points this season. Yeah, Madison's the better long-term player as well, I think. Correct. So I think that's what I would do. I've got no issues with Simicast. I knew that was going to happen. Uh, you know, if, if it comes to the case that everyone's pass fit, if I really wanted to get aggressive, um, I would actually leave the whole same team and move Turner down to a 3.9, 3.8 goalkeeper just to yeah. avoid any price drop there on Turner eventually. But that's that's kind of it for me. I, I, I'm in a good spot, which I know it's weird to say after 27 points, you've got a red arrow, et cetera. My team, if people are past fit, is fine. If Harlan's out for one game week, man, I'd bench him and see me cast plays against Brentford. I'm not too fast. Yeah, that's fair. So I will bring up my team because I do have some interesting dilemmas. Now, that is working. Oh, Sorry, guys. I have just made my life so much easier, Damo, because this is completely off the record, but I have um, moved my tab to the other screen, and now I can see everybody, and I can present. Ah. So moving forward, you don't have to do all the presenting. So <laughs> I figured it out. So, Success. It's all good. So, but if you see me looking this way, it's because this is where my team is, and this is where the camera is. So bear with me. But I will try and do it off, off the screen. So similar team to you this week. Still staying in the 3-5-2. Areola, Forrest we've spoken about. Cash for me, again, I don't know much about this shoulder injury. I feel like he might get rested in Europe. If he's on the bench, it's probably an indicator that he'll play at the weekend anyway. If he's fit enough to be on the bench, then good enough. Gabriel, I'm going to take the punt with and pray that he's... Um, I think he starts. Yeah, I think he, he starts as well. So very, very good option to have. Then we go Trippier again. Fantastic against Bournemouth. The Diaby, Sun, Bowen, Gordon, Salah again. Don't think much of that needs to change. Diaby no. gets Fulham. Sun against Wolves. Bowen against Forest. Gordon against Bournemouth. Salah against Brentford. And the captain goes to Salah for that nice, juicy home fixture as well. I think this is going to be a game where Brentford are going to sit there, do what they do, but they've still conceded goals in those games. You know, they've won them 3-2. They've won them 2-1. They've lost them 3-2 and lost them 2-1. So I just think there's going to be goals in that game. So I wouldn't be backing really either defense because I definitely see in Buemo Wissa picking us off for at least one return as well. And then the Darwin Harland, I think we just ride Darwin into the international break. And then the fixtures are actually all right for him post the Man City game anyway, I reckon, from memory. If you want to get brave and if you want to get... 
really, really, uh, you know, aggressive with Darwin. You actually sell him to a different striker in uh, Gabe McFerdy and literally buy him straight back for the next three fixtures because yeah. he's going to get rested in that. We game. could do that. And that depends and, on what we do long term. And for me, look, Archer, I've thought about it. I've, I was messaging you about it all Sunday about, you know, I've got two free transfers. Am I going to really take a minus four this week and get rid of Harland Archer and someone else and restructure the team into a three, four, three. I'm probably not leaning that way now. I, I just think looking at the team, it doesn't need like surgery. The one person that I've told you for many weeks, who's been on the hit list has been you doji. And I think this is the week where I can get aggressive with it because he has the suspension. I know it's only one game suspension, but the numbers like are not there. Like Since his I, injury has been woeful. Yeah, I like him as a player. And to the system that Spurs play, he's integral. But if you're picking a fullback now, and if I was on my wild card again, I would have changed it. I'd be going Pedro Porro if I was going to pick one of the Spurs defenders because he's the one that plays more the traditional fullback. Again, he had a good shot from outside the box that was saved again today. He's just a more attacking option. And at 4.8 million, I think it's definitely time to make a move. Now, there's probably two options because I've got 0.1 in the bank. I need to generate some funds here, so I'm not looking for a 4.9 mil defender. In my head, there's two options for me. One of them is... Let me just go to 4. I've got a, I've got an option for you. So the funny option is Maguire. Ah, that's my option. Because Luton Everton is good enough for two fixtures. Okay, I can definitely live with that. Like it's not the end of the world. And you're not relying on him every week. My other option is actually Jamal Lascelles. Nice option. The fixtures aren't as good. They kind of a bit hit and miss between both of them to be honest. It's whether do I want to double up on the Newcastle defence. Now, the reason I'm bringing Lascelles up is because Burns injured, Target's injured, Botman's injured. Lascelles has been playing. He's the club captain. He's played 90 minutes in one, two, three, four, five games in a row. He's got three clean sheets in five. The issue I've got is neither of them are like long-term defenders, but I feel like it's something that we can like, cross a bridge when we get there type of operation. I'm really stuck 50-50 on those two at the moment. I really don't know which way I'm going to go. And that This person would play this game week, I would imagine, because you're going to bench Simikash, yeah? Yes. So Bournemouth for Newcastle is a very nice fixture. To- I'll, I'm, I would lean the cells there for that reason, because he's definitely going to play this game week. So- and then you're, back, you're playing a 3-5-2, yeah? So you're going to play Trippier, Lascelles, and one of Cash or Gabriel. Yeah, so let me put Lascelles into my team because Cash, Gabriel, Trippier, then I can go 4-4-2, 4-5-1. Like, I've got options if I bring Lascelles in. What I'm probably doing is benching. So if I share this tab now because I'm high tech and I'm smart. So this is potentially what my team could look like going into the week. So actually benching cash against Fulham because Fulham looking all right. Um, or you're benching Darwin. They're probably the two options. I think not, you're not touching the midfield. I would captain Salah. It is a tough one. It, it really is a tough I think if you're bringing Lascelles in, you're playing him. My issue with Lascelles long-term is you bring him in for next week and you get Chelsea. Whereas if you go and bring in Maguire here instead... You get Luton and Everton, I think. So you, you get Luton this week. At home, you're probably playing Maguire too. So I still think that doesn't change. But then when you get Everton here, then you have Tottenham and Man City and Everton. Like So that, that defender has to play the two games. So it is a bit frustrating. But then for the week after, he gets Newcastle and then Cash comes in for... And that's it. And you're... So Maguire's, for me, feels the better, like, two-week punt. Whereas, yeah. But do, like, do we think Chelsea are going to do much at St. James Park as well? Like, would you want to double up on a Newcastle defender at St. James Park? That's the other question. What do you think? So knowing that, I don't think there's anyone else. I don't, the only other person I can probably think of in this bracket is Branthwaite at four. But he goes... 
Crystal Palace, Man United, Nottingham Forest. Yeah, I, I think it's these two that you would. I, I'm leaning Maguire because you get the second game week and it helps you maybe to keep Matty Cash if you want to as well. Where my plan is always been to get Matty Cash to an Arsenal defender where you've already got the Arsenal defender. So I think for you, Maguire is good because it allows you to keep Cash and it also allows you to see if a Stupian comes back in and if he hits the ground running, you can even move Cash to a Stupian in these game weeks too. Uh, but I think Load it's Maguire. Yeah. And I think it's Maguire personally. And he's a guy I nearly brought in this game week to play, but I didn't know who I was going to play him over. So I can't really sit here and go, that was, you know, that's cost me a green arrow because yeah. I thought about it, but I didn't do it. Um, so, since Maguire's come back into the team, he's kept two clean sheets. Obviously, the Sheffield United one was a frustrating one. He's playing 90 minutes. The question is more so around. How long are these two out for? So, Martinez, unknown return date. Varane was on the bench. Yeah. Now, does Varane come in for Johnny Evans? Probably. Like, you'd think so. I think Evans has been the better defender out of the two, personally. <laughs> but, uh, you know, um, I think Johnny Evans is a pretty class footballer. And he doesn't get the love. I honestly think Johnny Evans could be half a shout. It's tough. It's I, I think I think he's not going to drop Maguire. I think you drop en- Evans. You're dropping Evans first, aren't you? I think who's more important to the Man United back four? I think it is Johnny Evans in the current state of, of play. So it, it's one of those ones that I think if you went Maguire and he got benched, you'd feel unlucky. From the if information you have. Four, like I just don't. There's no one else I would do. I wouldn't go to Kabore. I wouldn't go to anyone else. I, I, you know, if you really wanted to take a punt on the, you know, on the Brighton defence, Veltman's on that list. Yeah. Um, and they got two good, decently good fixtures moving forward. He played 90 at the weekend. 90 he before. He, he's playing regularly, but they're just not a good defence. Nah, and to be fair, I would push to try and get the dunk at 4-5 or 4-6. Um, anyway. Um, oh, yeah, if we're getting rid of... Um... Your doge, we've got four nine sitting there. Like, yeah, do the, the Crystal dunk. Palace defenders cross your mind with Everton, Luton? Well, I've got Guayhi, so yes, you know. So, four six, it was, I think Anderson's actually more expensive. Five now, five one, something yeah. like that has gone up crazy amounts. So, the other option is you play Guayhi, and um, that's what I'm doing, and that's actually more of a sideways move more than anything. So if I go game week 12, are we game week 12 already? Holy moly. Yeah. So if we're bringing Gwaihi in, he gets Everton at home this week. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. So Everton at home for Gwaihi, you get Luton away. Shit, I might've just taught myself into Gwaihi. He's a good player. Like I've loved Gwaihi since I brought him in game week eight. And the whole reason. In, and they're a good the whole... defense. Yeah, they've got, they're tied top for most clean sheets this year as well, Palace. Mm, I'm going to have to watch his price this week. Yep. Because like, if, you, if you're telling me this is my team, so like, sorry, I'll just go back onto this screen here. So for this week, it's Ariola, Trippier, Guayhi, Gabriel in some good fixtures. Then you get the Salah, Sun, Diaby, Bowen, Gordon. I think Simicas, Cash probably both hit the bench anyway. Yep. I think Bournemouth, Everton, Burnley... You know, two home fixtures and Trippier away is fine. Then the week after, they pick up Luton away, which, again, anyone can keep a clean sheet or anyone can concede against Luton. We've seen that. So, uh, Gabriel against Brentford probably has to play that one for me coming out of the international break. Which don't isn't a bad Cash. feature. Yeah, and don't want to play Simicass. And then Archer against Bournemouth actually isn't the worst option potentially to play at home over... Someone Darwin probably comes out that week anyway because I've got two free transfers, so that could co- go to you know any sort of six and a half to seven mil striker, and then we can start to target game week 14 from there. So I actually think my and I don't mind Gordon against Chelsea at home in that fixture too. So hopefully, you know, maybe in Kunku sniffing around at that point after the international break could take an early punt on him at seven and a half. So I think the team's set up in a decent enough spot. So that's where my side is at currently. Um, quite interesting, you know, to look at. Damo, I can see you've 
throwing your screen up. Talk us through what you got. So this is obviously my game week for this game week. Down at 89%, but 95 team rating. Honestly, think the move for me will end up being this to Gabriel, right? And then he starts, obviously, over Simi Cass, because I do think we're going to concede, as you've alluded to, Paul. And, like, if you told me that was my one move and I still got two moves, two moves of the game week after, I've got a very good back three there that should all keep clean sheets. We have a keeper that should keep a clean sheet. Oh, uh, you know, you, Nottingham Forest know how to score, so maybe not. But a very similar midfield five, I think Madison's going to be past fit and I run the risk of whatever Harlan, if he starts, if he doesn't start, and that depends on team use, obviously, that we'll get. That still leaves me 0.7 in the bank, and that will still leave me two transfers to tackle this Darwin move. Yeah, And I, everyone else on this list is pretty good. You know, I'm happy to play Gabriel Luden. Trippy against Chelsea is obviously locked. Everyone else I'm happy to play. Gordon doesn't move out. And then it gives me two moves. And I honestly think my two moves here is Diaby goes all the way down to Cole Palmer in this game week, even though I know they get Newcastle. Yeah. And that would allow me to move Darwin to any punt I want, like any punt I want as a forward for that game week. Like, if I just went by four-week predictions, I could even go to Wilson, who plays Chelsea. I could go to Watkins, who plays Spurs, who aren't obviously great, right? Um, I could even go downwards and go to Edward and really punt on a different spot here. Like, I could go take a one-week punt on Edward and then move this up to any midfielder that has a good game week this week. Yeah. You know? I could take a punt on Bruno Fernandes for one week if I really wanted to. Yeah. And then, obviously, look to get Darwin back maybe for a hit. That's if I do that. So if I don't even do that, I've got two free transfers and I've got money in the bank. You know, there's a lot of things that I can do. So I think getting Gabriel in means that I will definitely more than likely either A, punt on two players in game week 13 or have two game week transfers in 14. And I think that's the point where I'll probably look to start, you know, maybe looking at the Madison coming out with Man City, West Ham, Newcastle sort of thing. And maybe that's where Cole Palmer comes into his own and, Levi Colwell starts coming into this team and stuff like that. So yeah. now if I was to refresh all that and show you what that looks like so it doesn't save. Yeah. Good old ultra member badge. Nice. You know, I'm here. Let's say it's, you know, I've got one transfer. Make the transfer early on Cole Palmer, for instance, because I think Newcastle is in the worst fixture. Maybe even Palmer Archer starting over Palmer. That gives me 2.2 mil with a bank. Yeah. And like when I have 2.2 mil on the bank and I'm happy with this and I'm happy with those, I can start going the lights of, well, Simicast has got a good game week. Gway, he's still got decent fixtures. Trippy's still got fixtures. Cash. And now this is where all of a sudden a Levi Cowell. Yeah. You know, I don't think I've made United that game week, but he's someone I would bench that game week for Simicast. But from long term, he's yeah. nailed. Palmer, long term, nailed. 2.6 mil in the bank. Darwin's got Sheffield and Palace. Madison could move to Saka if I really wanted to, if there was an injury. And by this game, another transfer, and then you're still attacking. Worst comes to worst here, boys. As with that amount of money in the bank, as long as pricing changes don't change too much. Yeah, you're just short. I'm short by point one, but I'm sure I can find point one. And then I could even go and fiddle around between a three four three, and, and a, a five four four, a four four two, and I could even play five playing defenders here if yeah. I really had to. And all of a sudden, that's not bad. And you want to know where the point one mil is? Down to any goalkeeper that's less than yeah, bang. For a, and you're doing that for a hit. Uh, if those have all happened in those consecutive weeks. I think I have two free transfers here. Say, for instance, like I'll get it the three point nine. Yeah, it means I could afford that. Does mean that in that big game week where they blank, because I do have to have two of them on the bench, but also means I've got all these playing players for that yeah, game week as well. So, fine. And I think that's the long-term play. And then obviously have no money in the bank, but know that this is a team that you can ride. And if there's a niggle or something like that, yeah, it's not a bad spot. But it obviously means that at this point, it means that I don't have a, um, I don't have a, uh, uh, an Arsenal midfielder. And obviously, I turn. I don't think that's the worst thing, anyway. To be honest, like correct, and I don't either. And not, I think that's they're not showing that they're you know major threats, and that actually feeds into um, something I want to bring up on screen before we uh, wrap up. So I'm going to give credit to the full ad bro um, over on Twitter. I'm hoping it's just loaded, which it has now. So he does some fantastic graphics um, over on Twitter as well. So this has. 
you know, the team's XG on the X axis going across and the players' non penalty expected goal involvement going up. So, obviously, what you want is like Darwin. So, Darwin has a 1.15 non penalty um, expected goals per 90. So, that's obviously taking into account that he plays 90 minutes, which we know doesn't happen all the time. So, what you're looking for are ca- are there any attackers? And I say attackers because a Stupinian is sat right in the middle of the screen because as a defender, he has a very attacking output in the way that he plays. What I notice on this sheet demo is a lack of Arsenal midfielders because I'm assuming their team XG is low and the players' individual non-penalty XG is low as well. Look at Saka's number. It's just so poor. 0.34. Where Middle of the it? screen, right down the bottom. Middle of the screen, right down Right the under bottom. Ferguson, oh, right yeah, under Wissel. All right. So that's showing you that his own XG, non-penalty XG, is extremely low, and the team's is in the middle. And he's the only Arsenal asset, I think, on the screen. So if you're a data player, and if you're listening at home, so just for some reference, Harlan is at 1.05 um, non-pen XG, and he's about three quarters of the way up the screen. Wilson, Isaac, and Salah are all 0.93, 0.9, 0.9. Wilson's the one winning that, and I think that's probably been the last couple weeks have boosted that for him, especially that game where he got two goals. I think that's probably boosted that over the last couple weeks. Um, And these players have had to at least play 300 minutes. But Madison's there at 0.61. Again, we know he's more of a creative threat. The one for me is Nicholas Jackson, who's at 0.65 non-pen XG. Right on the line. Which is a bit and weird now, for me, but I think... Would have went up this morning. Yeah, well, we scored three goals, so you know, and they were all high XG chances. Because so. they are all tap-ins against nine men. Yeah, which... Celebrate, is- celebrate in a very annoying manner. If I was a Spurs player, I would have gone off at him. But. Yeah. but what this is showing me is you're looking at the Watkins, you're looking at Embuemo. They're still very viable options, and, you know... You know, who you, you know who you're looking at at that list when he's fit? is you just realise how important a stupid is to Brighton's attack when you see those numbers. Yeah. And, oh, boy, when he's on his game, he is just so nailed Yeah. Um, in, in FPL. And I'm there's a, world where he, there's a world where he gets to 4.9 mil, and in the end it's a, it's cash to a stupid in two game weeks' time. He's, and he's somebody probably... Break. Yeah, and he, and he ride him through bad fixtures because you look at that and it's just like it's so good. Like... You're looking at all the rest of those numbers He's there too. He's got better numbers than Ferguson. Yeah, it, 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 it's mental. Um, like, and you also see there, Buemo's numbers are like really good. And you can see when... as well about game week 14. Could also just tell when Newcastle on and one of one of Isaac or Wilson is injured like Isaac is now, the other one is just so good to go for. Yeah, I agree with that. And you almost want Wilson to have him get that injury because I think Isaac's a bit cheaper than Wilson. And well, Isaac's a little bit easier to get in. You're correct. So, before we wrap it up, is there anything else that you wanted to cover before we end things tonight? Well, I wanted just to cover that we're 11 game weeks in and ranks are still relatively tight-ish. So, I wouldn't be panicking right now. You know, it's time to put the panic button when you get the game week eight and you're five mil in the world because I've been there last year. Um, and I still managed to finish inside the top 300k. So, don't panic, guys. Everyone's had a bad game week, not just you. So don't blow it up. Don't go taking negative eight and 12 hits. Look at the guys that panicked. They got Harlem back this game week for a negative eight. Yeah. You know, they're the guys that are on negative. They're, they're the guys on 15 points. There's a guy in my head to head league that did all that and he's on four points total after yeah, all the hits. Geez. Right. So there's a lot of guys out there that have worse weeks. It's going to be plenty of time to make up rank gain. And there is someone in my head-to-head leagues that I did lose to this week, and he tripled Captain Harlan. So as much as I did lose to him this week, I'm pretty sure he's in a world of hurt moving forward. So just keep calm, wait as long as possible, and I'm sure you're going to be okay. And on that note, thank you guys once again for listening, for watching. If you are new to the channel, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Make sure you jump over to Damo's channel. It is the name that he's got on screen, Damo underscore 23. He'll probably have an individual video, which will be very similar to what he's probably explained tonight. Anyway, same with me. I'll probably have a bit more of an in-depth video where I'll do my typical graphics and things later in the week with my transfer targets. But once again, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and we will see you guys.
hopefully next week. Oh, it's international break next week, isn't it? Yeah, promise to do a recap. Yeah, we'll do a recap type podcast and sort of planning for the international break. So we'll see you guys then, and hopefully you have a fantastic week and another good rank climb in your leagues or your overall rank.